Great Chefs, welcome to Food for Thought, where I don't cook from a book. I will be your host, Chris John Lindsay, and today I will be making a healthier version of an old recipe, homemade spaghetti sauce. What I love about this dish is the wide variety of ingredients that we can you can use to make the sauce with. Um, it started off with just onions, bell pepper, and mushroom, and I've expanded it to use a wide variety of uh, garden vegetables. So, as you can see here, I've got, um, besides the bell pepper, mushroom, and onion, I also have bok choy, parsley, uh, celery, and uh, leeks. Um, I also, uh, earlier, well a few months ago, I had canned some a bunch of tomatoes from my garden and that's what's in the two jars here. Um, so we'll be cooking with those today as well. Um, the uh, measuring cup that you see here is uh, actually uh, beef broth, which we'll talk about that later. Go When I started cooking this type of dish, um, I used to use a can of tomato sauce and a can of tomato paste and uh, another can of stewed tomatoes and it ended up being really turning out uh, well enough but I wanted to start using um, fresher ingredients instead of stuff out of a can so that's why I'm using all these other vegetables today. So the first step of getting the sauce ready is preparing the tomatoes. Since we're not using stuff from a can or tomato paste or prepackaged tomatoes which is kind of the point of uh, you know making homemade it's not really homemade if you're getting it out of a can right <laughs> so uh, we're going to be getting the tomatoes ready and it's a process called blanching now since I already had um, jarred my own tomatoes from the garden so all that's in there is uh, water and tomatoes with some uh, fresh spices that I also had in the garden. Um, I'm just going to show you the process of actually blanching tomatoes so that uh, if you don't have your own already homemade ingredients then uh, you know if you just buy a bunch of tomatoes at the store you can do this to make the tomato sauce with. So the first thing you do is uh, get the water started. Um, you want it to be on a low boil, so I'll turn on the heat here. Um, and when to prepare the tomatoes, what you do, you, you wash them first, which I already have, and uh, you cut this little piece off right here because it just makes it easier for peeling when you're, after you get it out of the water. So I'll do that right now. Since the knife is sharp, you want to make sure you don't cut yourself, since it likes to poke through. But you just cut that piece out all the way. <laughs> Hopefully, you can do it better than me. <laughs> and you know, on to the next one. Okay, so now while we're waiting for the water to boil, I'll just talk about what it is we're going to be doing with the blanching process. First, uh, once the, after the water starts to boil, then we drop the tomato in, in into the pan and wait for roughly one to two minutes. Um, what I usually wait for is when the, the skin, you'll see the skin uh, pop or break or crack and that's when you take it out of the pan of the pot that that's when it's really done so um, in order to take it out you use this uh, uh, slotted spoon and uh, you, you take it out of there and it's going to be really hot so after you take it out then you put it in this ice water bath for just a couple seconds and then after you after that then you take it out and you put it in the bowl here and then you do that with the next one and the third one after uh, they're all done and then um, then you peel the tomato and then after the tomatoes peeled you put it back in the bowl here and uh, then it's ready for the sauce go 
Okay, now that the water's boiling, I'll drop the tomatoes into the pan. And just be sure not to uh, burn yourself on the hot water. And now we wait for a minute or two for the uh, skins on the tomatoes to start cracking. Okay, so now that uh, the skins are starting to crack open, now it's time to get the tomatoes out. So you use the slotted spoon, pull it out so you can see how it's started to split off. You put it in here for just a second or two, and then uh, drop it into the bowl. That's just to make it easier on uh, peeling it on your fingers because it's really hot. And do that for all the tomatoes, which we only have three. Third one, the ice bath, drop into the bowl. That's it. And then you can turn the pan off, take it off the burner, and peel the tomatoes. like getting your hands dirty well I'm not sure how you would do that without getting your hands dirty but this is one of the few parts where you get your hands dirty on the veggies and just peels off nice and easy mainly because we cut that stem part out if we didn't cut the stem part out it would be a lot more difficult dealing with the stem thing so, that's why this is slightly easier than it at all. Now the third one. I'm able to hold it because we put it in the ice bath. Right now, I would not be able to hold this thing if it didn't use that. So, now those are ready for the tomato sauce. So, now that the... A uh, few fresh tomatoes we had are blanched and ready for the sauce. Uh, we'll prepare the uh, other jars of tomatoes, which actually I'm just going to be doing one of them, this one here. Um, one of the things when uh, over the years of cooking this type of recipe is my kids would complain that if I just used the tomatoes like this, um, they didn't like it because it didn't have the sauce associated that they're used to having, which, you know, just a thin well, sauce. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, puree this in uh, with a handheld pureeer that I have and um, leave the other can just as it is. So we'll have a can of basically like a, it's like having a can of tomato sauce, only it's fresh and a... Uh, a can of stewed tomatoes which is what this effectively is and then as well as the tomatoes that we already have cooked up here so first what I this is the uh, uh, blender thing that I have which needs me to plug it in and open the jar it in this and you can see I've got more than just tomatoes in here it's because I put uh, also fresh from my garden um, some oregano and um, what else? There was something else I put in there anyway another fresh <laughs> herb from my garden that I can't remember but anyway it's supposed to be in there and you can kind of yeah you can really smell it too it's great so just take this thing Okay, so now I'm going to blend this up. And keeping it down inside is what keeps it from spraying anywhere. So it looks all mixed up. prepare the vegetables for cooking. So 
the next step of uh, making the sauce now, it, since the tomatoes are now ready, is to uh, saute up the other vegetables, which I've already chopped up here. All the stuff that you saw earlier, uh, the leeks, the bell pepper, the mushroom, the celery, the onion, um, the bok choy, it's all in here. And um, so the first thing to do is to put some olive oil in the pan. Um, just enough to cover the bottom there, or not the whole bottom. Well, how's that? Like that. <laughs> and uh, start the burner on high, and after that, uh, we can just throw, put the stuff in now. So you can put the stuff in the pan, and uh, while it heats up. When it's start, you'll hear it start sizzling, and um, that's when you have to start stirring it around. So I put all the vegetables in the pan, and now we're waiting for the pan to heat up for the vegetables to saute. And then once they've sautéed, then we will put in all the tomatoes and the spices. So now I can hear it start sizzling. It's a good sign. One of the great things about this is it makes this most wonderful smell that goes through the whole house. <laughs> so just stirring it up a little bit so it's not all bunched together and how it originally was in the bowl. So just stirring up the vegetables now. Try to get some of the oil all over it. Looks like I didn't have enough, so I'll put some more in. Not much. Just count to 1001. And so, it's looking good and Probably about a few more minutes and it'll be ready. And then we can add the rest of the stuff. Okay, and uh, what we have here is the tomatoes that we blanched earlier, plus a, a jar of tomatoes that I had canned earlier this year. Um, one of the other jars that I uh, pureed into a sauce, um, this is fresh parsley. And the other spices we have here are oregano, basil, thyme, and garlic. And back here is, this is beef broth. Now one of the things that um, I used to do with this is I used to cook hamburg in with all of this. And uh, since I wanted to start cook cooking with less meat, um, I had found that... Uh, I liked it, but my kids didn't. They missed the hamburg flavor that was in the sauce. So what I just decided to try doing, and it worked, is to just pour in a little bit of beef broth in with the sauce, and it gives that beef flavor to the sauce without actually having the beef in it. So it's it wouldn't you know constitute vegetarian or vegan sauce, but it's for the people that like having the taste of meat but not actually getting all the chunks of meat. So Now that uh, vegetables are looking really good, here's kind of a thing of what we're doing here. And one more minute and they should be done. Smells awesome. Okay, now that the vegetables are ready, like so, now it's time to put in all the tomatoes. Um, at this point I usually turn down so that it doesn't really start boiling right away, but drop in the tomatoes we blanched, plus some of the Tomatoes we turn into a sauce. 
and the other jar of tomatoes. Spices, so I'm adding the fresh parsley. Um, it just kind of, since I do a lot of intuitive cooking, I just guess as to what I want. That looks good. And I'll put in some oregano. which if you have fresh of this that's always best but you don't have to um, this just happens to be easier um, for the time Oops. garlic And since it's steaming, you want to check that it uh, doesn't have stuff sticking to the top there, or your spices will be bad. And I like to put in black pepper also. And stir that up. to do um, since you know my kids aren't here right now so I don't really need the beef broth I'm just going to add a little bit of water so that it, it uh, stays as a sauce a lot of it boils off but um, it keeps it from just turning into a solid sauce Now that that's done, uh, we get to uh, wait about an hour for it to cook, stirring every 30 minutes, um, 15 to 30 minutes, uh, just to make sure that it's not uh, sticking to the bottom or um, over boiling, you know, so you can adjust the temperature and stuff. Here we are with the final uh, presentation of the meal of the uh, homemade spaghetti sauce that we just created. Uh, put on top of some spaghetti noodles in the uh, pasta bowl. Um, also, uh, to accompany this meal, um, I created a side salad with uh, uh, lettuce and uh, cucumber, carrots, just, you know, regular vegetables. Um, I also uh, had made some garlic, uh, toasted garlic, buttered garlic bread uh, with the uh, rosemary garlic bread that I purchased at the um, bakery that's down the street from here, which wherever you live, you probably have one that's yeah, near you. Um, also, there's um, here's some Parmesan cheese that we can put on the pasta, which if if you like it, you can have it. If you don't, well, you don't have to do it. But I like it, so here it goes. And um, there, it definitely looks delicious to me. I hope you feel the same way. And um, I hope your uh, try at experimenting making this dish goes well for you. following day after having made the spaghetti sauce and 
I will now be making lasagna using the leftover spaghetti sauce. So with the, the ingredients of the lasagna are the lasagna noodles, which look like this, um, if you buy them at the store. Uh, there's also different cheeses with it, uh, typically ricotta, mozzarella, and parmesan cheeses, as well as using a, a tomato sauce, which um, some people will use like a meat sauce or uh, you know, just a, another type of tomato sauce. But um, what I like to do is I can use the leftover spaghetti sauce, since I usually make a giant batch of it, um, and then I can make a lasagna with it, and it turns out great. So uh, here I will be uh, showing you about making lasagna. So the first step is to, um, well, I, to reheat the sauce, because it's easier to spread when the sauce is warm, and um, to uh, boil the, the pasta noodles, which um, you don't want them to fully cook. Uh, you want them to get kind of like half cooked. Um, basically, they're they're floppy, like they're you know like they look like they're done, but they're not. They're still kind of chewy. Um, they end up finishing cooking while you bake it in the oven, so it ends up turning out okay. So um, also, when you're boiling the pasta, uh, you want to have oil in the water with it, like olive oil. Um, that way the noodles won't stick together after you've taken them out of the water before assembling. Um, and one thing to do um, is to kind of arrange a couple of the noodles in the pan that you have, um, which I, I'm using this pan here, um, just to make sure that they'll actually fit and, and how they will fit in the pan. Um, so now that I've seen for this size pan, uh, it's not quite one noodle long, so one thing I'm going to end up having to do is to cut the noodle. Um, so I'll end up having little pieces of noodle about yay long um, on one end of the pan, and that's just to keep the lasagna together inside the pan so it doesn't all droop out one side because your noodles aren't long enough. So, um, Something I should also mention when uh, cooking the pasta noodles is um, you'll want at least uh, three layers of noodles because otherwise you end up with just uh, lasagna pie <laughs> instead of a lasagna. Um, so and it's also dependent on how deep your pan is. Um, and also you want to cook at least a few extra noodles because sometimes they break while you're trying to take them out of the, out of the hot water. Um, okay, so the noodles have been cooked for about five minutes. And I'll be taking them out of the pan and laying them on the plate. You want to lay them out so that they don't... Uh, easier to reassemble so they don't stick together. Um, I guess while I'm doing this, I can turn the oven on to 375 so it's ready for baking the lasagna. Okay, now that all the pieces and parts are ready, we're going to put together the lasagna. So the first thing you do is to lay some of the sauce down 
at the bottom of the pan so that it doesn't stick to the pan. I suppose you could use a non-stick spray, but whatever. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to just do what I've been always known to do, which is put the, some sauce on the bottom. And you can see all the different stuff that comes with the sauce that we've made. Um, mushrooms, onions, and everything else. Which is fine, because it gives more stuff to the sauce. I mean, to the lasagna. What am I saying? Yeah, the sauce already has it. <laughs> so, there. One layer of sauce. Then you put a noodles down. One. So, if you wanted to use an unbroken one you're more than welcome to yourself me I'm not that picky so. and so now that that's down the first the next thing you do is put in some of the ricotta cheese is this which it's easier to do with two spoons uh, you just make a lump and kind of flatten it out next lump flatten it out as you go and basically just have a layer of it on each of the noodles and then after this part's done we put the mozzarella cheese down and then a little bit of the parmesan cheese all right now that the ricotta cheese is there we'll put in some of the mozzarella just a thin layer doesn't need to be a lot you're gonna have tons of cheese in here anyway um, and then some of the Parmesan. Okay, now we put a layer of sauce over it. So, now that that's done, then we put in the next layer of pasta on. And then you keep doing that until you're uh, you're all the way up to the top of your pan and then after that on the very top you just sprinkle some more parmesan cheese on there and um, as opposed to any sauce you just put some cheese over the top and then you put it in the oven for 30 to 40 minutes at 375 degrees and uh, and one thing that I like with it is that uh, is when the top is all the cheese is all browned so I kind of wait till then myself um, but you can uh, it, it should be done by 30 minutes but sometimes you can wait uh, some people's ovens need to wait for 40 minutes so anyway after that's done then uh, then the lasagna is ready okay now that the lasagna is ready we're gonna put it in the oven Okay, the lasagna is done. And I hope you think it looks as good as me. I mean, I hope you <laughs> I hope you think it looks as good as I think it does. Um, some people will add oregano or parsley on top to give it a little more green color, but I think it looks fine just the way it is um, and that's how you make lasagna and I uh, hope yours turns out just as well